thank you for having me first of all and yes um, moving anyone is a transition many times it's to a bigger home to an out-of-state location um, but especially for people with special needs it is a huge transition it's a very emotional time in most people's lives even if it's a move that they're really looking forward to it takes a lot of emotional energy it takes a lot of thought in general and it takes a lot of physical energy to pack and get things where they need to be so as one of six children I happen to live in the same state as my dad so getting him moved was uh, easier for me than my, many of my other siblings but in doing that I realized that the first part of his move was he was still able to you know be present and help a little and tell us some things the second time we had to move into assisted living was very uh, difficult for him he kind of knew that that might be the last time he would get to move and that his situation was probably not going to get better and each space became smaller so he went from his estate if you will which every doesn't matter how many square feet it is when someone's worked their entire life to build and acquire things through their work then it becomes their estate and and so he was a very modest means but it was still his home his backyard his garage so each time he had to move to a smaller space a few more of his things had to go away as did some of his activities so by the time he got to assisted living he no longer needed any of his tools he no longer needed any of the supplies in his garage his car was no longer needed so each time his his ego was a little more deflated his his pride his his sense of what he had accomplished in his life was had become smaller and smaller and so that's one of the things that we try to keep in mind with all of the people that we work with especially those with special needs is they've lost something and in many cases they've lost a lot as far as their abilities to to just function to move their mobility but also in many cases they've lost their ability to to think clearly to make decisions on their own um, and and with that goes so much of who they are and we all know that we love them for who they are and it doesn't matter which is still my dad still my mom or whoever it is but for them personally it's a very deep loss and yes we provide a service and yes we make money but it becomes more for us because we put ourselves in the position of being the sons and daughters who are helping and sometimes there are family members present lots of times they live out of state or can only come for a short time so we become the eyes and ears and, and uh, arms and legs of, of, of the project. And we try to put ourselves into how would we feel? How would, how would we want this done for our parents? So. In many cases, we deal with the children, adult children. We're probably, in many cases, we're as compassionate and maybe more compassionate because a lot of times they put up a wall to just deal with the move. It's like a function that has to happen. And rather than a loving service that they're providing, they're just trying to get mom or dad from point A to point B. Every book, every vase, every painting, every piece of furniture has a story. And, and if, you, if the person who's moving is in that space, then they want to talk about those things. We're able to kind of keep things moving but if it's the son or the daughter or another relative it's harder for them to just put a, say stop we've got to keep going we can kind of keep working and 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 make it a little more um, productive without there being any animosity but 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 again emotions run high when people are moving and we're very aware with that so we try to just keep it as I said productive but also loving and if someone wants to stop and talk about a photo album then we'll one of us will pull off and talk briefly and and thank them 
and be kind and, and, and like I said, watch for cues because they're trying to tell a story even if they don't have a, 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 an ability to speak a lot. Um, but then we also, as I said, try to keep moving in to get things packed and ready to go to the new space. If possible, we like to get a, um, a blueprint of where they're moving so we can help determine which pieces will actually fit. Because if you're moving from a 3,500 square foot house into a 1,200 square foot space, obviously several things cannot go. So we help pick out the most favorite pieces. We, if possible, we walk room to room. We uh, put a you know, post-it note on those pieces. These are going, and then we look at the blueprint and make sure the configurement will work. The other thing we try to do is we take as many photos as possible so that we can replicate what they have had in their new space because familiarity is very, very important to all of us, but especially to someone who has special needs. They really want their favorite photos, their favorite paintings, their favorite plant, their favorite chair, tables. It's very, very important. So if they can identify those, no problem. If they cannot, Again, we look in the space that they've been in and try to bring as many of those pieces and make them fit in the new space. And then we spend a lot of our time replicating. If their coffee mugs are on the left side of the sink in the cabinet, that's where we put them. We try to make sure which, if, if there's uh, dishes in the dishwasher, we'll pull those out because obviously those are the ones they like. Those are the ones they're gonna use if dishes in the, in the sink things that are on their dining room table. Those are pieces that are used daily, obviously. Nightstands. We try to set, take a picture so that when they, once we set up their new bed and, and, and the entire space, their clock radio is in the same space. It'll be set up for the same time and the buttons will be the same and the remote will be in the same place because familiarity truly is comforting to them. And and again, depending on their mobility, you know, many factors have to be considered. You don't want rugs, you don't want furniture crowded, so you have to make decisions as to what will fit to keep the walkways open. Well, one of the things we also try to make very simple for them is uh, organizing their closets, their drawers, because too much is confusing. And that's one of the things we can work with the um, uh, adult children or, or spouse uh, when there is a move to, to pare back because once the items are in, especially with clothing, shoes, once the items are set up in the new space, that person's probably not going to go search each day for a new outfit to wear. So as you said, that's a great idea, you know, a clothes horse, just put that out, keep those things that are most familiar and then have some backups. Again, and when we move people, we don't just strip their bookshelves of things, but we talk with them, if possible, or with the, the adult children or their spouse, and we find out, are any of these being used? Because if they're not, then we will probably keep uh, favorite pictures and things, and that way the, the space isn't overcrowded, and we, we haven't uh, gotten rid of those things, we've just put them in boxes and kept them separate so that the family members can decide what they want to do with them. But again, when you're moving from a 3,500 square foot house down to 12 or whatever, 100 square feet, um, you've got some decisions to make. We're a good buffer with that. We understand how, again, someone has worked their entire life to build and have what they have. Uh, they've earned, you know, they've earned every piece of furniture. They've, they've their earnings have paid for everything, and they're they're proud of that. And so to say, well, just sell that or get rid of that. I don't I don't want that. It hurts them. So we're we're kind of good about being the buffer in between, so that the adult children don't have to tell mom and dad, I'm I don't even want that. I'm going to get rid of it. We'll we'll take care of that on the after everything's handled. And one of the things we try to do is schedule the move so that it's what I call done in a day. We've uh, scouted several times before the actual that move day. Mm -hmm. the, the person. That's great. But so we've identified what is going. But in many cases, 
they haven't really processed the fact that it's going to happen. And so, if possible, we ask that a family member, dear, dear friend, someone they love, takes them after breakfast. They eat breakfast, they wake up in their own bed, they eat breakfast. We ask that they leave after breakfast. And then we literally descend on that house. We know exactly uh, who's going to wrap what and pack what and how it's going to be put in the truck. And, and we make the move as quickly as possible because our goal, uh, with if it's within the same city, our goal is always to have their bed set up and their bedroom completely ready for them that night. So they don't have to stay in a hotel. They don't have to go to someone else's home. If it's an out-of-state move, it's a little bit different situation. But most of the time, when there's um, a special needs uh, person involved, the move is not far away because most family members and loved ones understand that big, long moves are very difficult. If you're dealing with someone with uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, the questions will come and the questions will come again and the question will come again and the comments will be made over and over and over. And for us, we just acknowledge it like it's the first time we heard it because for them it is the first time they've asked it. Mm -hmm. They don't know that they've asked us the same question three other times. So when they say, where are the photos that I'm giving to my daughter? This is so-and-so, they're right here. We've got your daughter's name. And usually we do try to, especially if we're helping them get organized before they move, we will take uh, big fat markers and white paper so they know exactly what they're looking for. And if this is going to daughter named Lisa and this one's going to daughter named Ann and there's a son named Bob, we write that name on there and we make stacks for them. So they, when we come back, they may, those stacks may be scrambled, but they can put those things where they want them. And they'll say, now, where's the stack for Lisa? It's right here. And we'll show them, here's what is in the stack. Is this what you want for her? Is this what you want for Ann? Is this what you want for Bob? And that gives them a sense of control because, like it or not, they've lost so much that that little sense of control that they think they know that that's Bob and Lisa and Ann's stacks and that they put them there, is it's just comforting to them. And so we're not going to say, well, we put that there. And again, you mentioned the word patience. Dealing with these people takes a lot of patience. And yet that's the God-given gift. That's the fruits of our labor is to have patience with them and with their adult children or their whoever is uh, in charge of them because lots of times they've lost all their patience <laughs> at least for that moment because it can be exhausting and that's the place that is important to reach is that place of peace because yes the, they will make peace with the fact that they move and that they're in a new space but if their questions aren't answered and they are not, they do not feel some sense of control, then my observation is Maddie can become a little bit combative and, and, and um, th that's not good for anyone. And so right. the, the more, again, it, it goes back to patience and it does take a lot on all sides. Um, one of the things that a lot of our clients worry about is, well, well what's going to happen to everything else? And what we do is um, we work with other family members if if there are pieces or items in a home that, uh, that they want but are unable to pick up we will package and ship it to them we will deliver it to them whatever needs to be done but we also as we're emptying the house um, from the front to the back we're cleaning it so that the for sale sign can go in the front yard uh, of a property when we're done wow. and that takes a huge burden off everyone because the person who's moving doesn't have to wonder, well, oh my gosh, you know, I hope someone doesn't want to move in there and it's not clean. Or so 
it's a turnkey sort of thing. You know, we fix the leaky, leaky faucets and change out the light bulbs, especially if you have adult children who are handling the move because rarely can they take two or three weeks off from work to get the move completed or to wrap things up in the home. And, you know, the, the asset that has the most value is the home. Certainly the contents have some value, but not what people think that they have. So the sooner that it goes on the market for sale, the more rapidly those assets are set aside and are of comfort to the person who has moved to it. If mail needs to be redirected, if cable boxes have to be returned, all the little things that, that go into getting a, a house or an apartment or whatever wrapped up 